Uh, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be showing you how to do glow effects on items. Now this is something that I think a lot of people uh, implement in their games. It's a really, really good look to have. Um, you know, when you walk up to an item, to have it sort of glow a little bit just makes it way more intuitive for the player. It makes it like a, a much nicer experience. Um, and it just looks like way better. So I'm going to show you today how to implement a glowing effect on your item using basically just pure C++. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that we need to do, actually, is to go to our post-process volume. Now, I'm pretty sure most versions have this, um, but some versions, I think some of the older ones, actually, do not come with a post-process volume already in the scene. So if you don't have one, just go to volumes, uh, and then drag in a post-process volume. Now, um, once we have that selected, if you go down here, make sure it is ticked to be unbound. And that will mean that it affects the whole world, not just if you're inside the volume. Uh, and then what we want to do is go to the Blendables tab under Settings. And Blendables is an array. So we'll add one element and then choose an asset reference. And then select M underscore highlight. So once you have that selected, go to the priority and make sure that's set to be 1. Um, and by the way, you probably won't have M underscore highlight, so I will link that in the description. It's quite a complicated material. It um, throbs in and out. It uh, looks really nice. So I'll link that in the description. Go ahead and download that. It's quite complicated. Um, so yeah, it'll be in the description. Anyway, so once we've got that all set up, we're ready to begin making an actor. So in our C++ classes, I'm going to right click and go new C++ class. We'll go to actor next and then i'm just going to call this a uh, glowing item actually let's go glowing object and now you can uh, implement this effect on anything you can do it on you know pick up items or you know bosses or just anything so it's a really cool uh, effect so i've already implemented it in this um glowing pickup here so I've made another one called glowing object so just in case you're wondering what glowing pickup is that's just another one that I've already made so in our new glowing object class let's make a glowing object the first thing I'm going to do is add a protected section here and in here I'm going to declare all of the components I want so my glowing object is obviously going to have a static mesh so let's start by making that new property edit anywhere and then we'll say use static mesh component Um, SM underscore pickup and I'm calling it SM underscore pickup just so it's a little more descriptive as to what it does we can see SM and straight away we know oh that's the static mesh for the pickup we're also going to add a box component because I'm going to be using a trigger box to determine whether we're turning the glow effect on or off so if the player is inside of the box then we can make it glow and if the player isn't inside of the box then we won't make it glow if that makes sense so let's make that a U-Box component, and we'll call it BT underscore pickup. So as soon as we see that, we know, oh, it's a box trigger, right? All right, so those are all added. The next thing to do is to add a function that is going to toggle our glow on and off. So I'm going to call this, uh, I'll just put a little comment here, toggles item glow. And then we'll just say void toggle glow. And then that will take one parameter, ball is glowing. And there's a couple of other um, functions we're going to have to add in here. These are quite complicated functions. The parameters are a little bit complicated. Um, if you've watched my Unreal Engine series, we cover these in tutorial number three, I believe. But I'll explain these as I write them. So we need to declare these as U functions, by the way. Otherwise, they will not work. So entered object radius and that takes a bunch of parameters so actor other actor so that's the actor that's enters the box now uh, let's add the rest of these u primitive component other comp int32 other body index Okay, so 
those are all the parameters. They're a little bit complicated, and I won't explain all of them. But um, they don't really matter anyway, because we're not going to be accessing any of these parameters. But they do need to be there when you um, add the dynamic on component begin overlap uh, function. So if we just copy this over, we'll add another one of these here, and we're going to change this to exit, or we'll call it left object radius. And this is the function that's going to be called when we leave the radius. Um, and so we're just using these two functions to determine, is the player close enough to the object that we want it to glow? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these last two um, parameters because um, we don't need these for the left object radius function. Alright, so everything here is set up in our .h file. Now we just need to implement the stuff in the CPP. So I'm going to say static mesh pickup. We'll just initialize the static mesh. So create default sub object. And by now you guys should be very familiar with what that does. So we're initializing our static mesh component. And then I'm just going to pass in some text and I'm just going to put in SM pickup. And now let's initialize our box trigger. This is going to be a little bit more um, a little bit more difficult to initialize this because we need to link all of our um, functions. So we'll initialize that as a UBox component. And then text, and we'll say BT pickup. So let's say that we want our box to generate overlap events, because otherwise it will not work, our, our functions that we're mapping soon. So B generate overlap events equals true. So now it will generate overlap events. And now we'll add our um, begin and end overlap events. So let's say BT underscore pickup. On component begin overlap dot add dynamic. Now it won't come up in the um, IntelliSense, but add dynamic is a function. That's just a little bug. And then we'll say this, and then at um, or ampersand rather a glowing object, and then we will link it to what do we call it? Entered object radius, right? So entered object radius and we'll right click on this quick actions and create a definition for that that's much easier than typing it out ourselves and then we'll do the same for left object radius so just go ahead and implement that might take a few seconds There we go, so that's all implemented. Uh, and then we need to implement our toggle glow, which I'll just copy and paste over, because sometimes it can take a little while to generate that, so. Right, so we've implemented all of these functions. Now we need to actually give them a body. So for this toggle glow, um, that's very easy. All the toggle glow is going to do is it's going to take the static mesh, and it's going to set the render custom depth. And you'll see the effect that this gives in the game in a sec. But we're going to set that to is glowing. So whatever we've passed into this function, that's what the render depth is going to be. So you'll see that in a second. Uh, so when we enter the object radius, let's use our toggle glow function now to true. So that's going to, when we enter the radius, um, it's going to toggle the glow. And when we leave the radius, we'll turn the glow off, like so. Right, so that's all set up. Um, there's one more thing that I'm going to do, and I'm just going to add the other function. So the on component begin, or oh, sorry, on component end overlap, I believe it's called. There we go. Dot add dynamic. This and a glowing object. Um, what do we call that? Left object radius. There we go. So now everything's all wired up. It's all it's all set and ready to go. Um, I believe we shouldn't have to add anything else. So as you can see, that is quite simple. It's not really a lot of code there. Uh, all we need to do now is compile, and I'll start recording when we have compiled. All right. So the compile has finished. What we're going to do now is drag our glowing object into the our game. 
And as you can see, we have the box trigger and we have the static mesh. So let's set the static mesh. I'm just going to make it a, um, let's just make it a chair because why not? And our box trigger, we want to put it around where our chair is. Now it's down there for some reason, but it doesn't matter because we've set it up to be editable anywhere. And I'm going to set the scale to this to be 2 by 2 by 2. So that's what I've set the scale as. And we'll just move that around. In fact, I'll make it a little bit bigger. We'll make it 3 by 3 by 3. There we go. So now we have a box surrounding our object. And when we enter the box, the chair should glow. And when we leave the box, it should stop glowing. So let's try that out now. Uh, so if I walk, you can see it's glowing, it's throbbing, and if I walk away, no longer uh, doing the effect. So this is really cool if you've got like a pickup item. It makes things look really nice. I uh, really like this effect. So anyways, go ahead, try this out, try add it to your game, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.